The emergence of the COVID-19 virus spreading like wildfire last year brought the world to a standstill. But amidst this pandemic, numerous researchers and companies came together to build many different kinds of vaccines. As a result of this, today we have several vaccine candidates in development with around 70 plus vaccines in various stages of human trials and 15 plus approved ones that are being administered worldwide. This rate of vaccine development and manufacturing has been commendable. We shall now discuss the vaccines that are a part of the mass vaccination drive in our country. There are three vaccines being administered in India. One of them is Covaxin. This is an inactivated viral vaccine indigenously developed by Bharat Biotech in collaboration with ICMR and NIV. Another vaccine is Covishield which is a viral vector vaccine. It is an Oxford AstraZeneca developed vaccine and is being manufactured locally by the Serum Institute of India. The other vaccine that has been approved is Sputnik V vaccine. It was developed by Russia's National Research Center for Epidemiology and Microbiology. There are other vaccines available in other countries like the Johnson and Johnson vaccine Janssen and the mRNA based Moderna and Pfizer BioNTech vaccines. It does not stop here with many more still in production and trials. Now that you know that there is more than one vaccine, you want to take only the best vaccine. But how to find out which is the best? That's when you come across vaccine efficacy. There are vaccines with high efficacy rates and there are those with low efficacy rates. So is the vaccine at the top the best or can we take any of the approved vaccines? To understand this, let's see how the efficacies are calculated. During clinical trials, the vaccine is tested on a large population. The candidates registered in these trials are divided into two groups, where half are administered the vaccine, whereas the other half receive a placebo. Scientists monitor them to see whether or not they catch the infection over the next several months. Let's say, for example, 5,000 participants are registered for the trials. Out of the total registrations, an arbitrary number of participants got COVID-19. Let's say 200. Now, if all of these 200 participants were from the placebo, we can say that the vaccine has 100% efficacy. Whereas, if this 200 is equally split as 100 from each of the groups, then the vaccine has 0% efficacy. In a case where 20 who received the vaccine got the viral infection, whereas the rest 180 were from the placebo. the vaccine is said to have 90% efficacy so this does not mean that among 100 who received covid shield 33 will get the disease the actual meaning is that a person with covid shield is 67% less likely to get covid 19 than one without a vaccine but still why can't we compare these numbers the clinical trials for each vaccine might have happened in different regions and at different times one when the infection rates were low while the other when the infection rates were high leading to different efficacy rates also the viral strain prevalent in the region where the trials were conducted might influence the results so it's not just the numbers that matter rather what actually matters is that all vaccines were able to reduce the infection and death rates worldwide and finally we ask ourselves why is there a need for so many different vaccines when all are said to have equivalent efficacy rates well let's take a look at some interesting facts as of december 2020 there were over 200 vaccine candidates for covid-19 being developed of these at least 52 candidates are in human trials based on previous experiences it's known that only 7% of the vaccines in preclinical studies succeed but out of those that do make it to clinical trials Only one out of five have a chance of reaching the market. This, along with other factors such as how different vaccines are specific to different population groups, and taking into consideration the effectiveness and safety of these vaccines, makes it necessary to work on developing several vaccines. For example, due to a weakened immune system, the older age group may or may not be eligible for a given vaccine. Hence having lots of different vaccines in development increases the chances that there will be one or more successful vaccines that will be shown safe and efficacious for the intended prioritized populations and to vaccinate a larger population. The take home message here is that despite the different efficacies all vaccines safeguard our body against the virus and will be effective in bringing the pandemic to a standstill. 
they are all different paths leading to the same destination so let's all take the vaccine because it is worth a shot